Hello and welcome to another edition of the Magpie Circle. Welcome to Magpies fans wherever you are in the world, from Canada to Australia. We know you all tune in for this show and we look forward to, hopefully, with our fans uh, providing you with an hour or so's interesting debate and chat. Uh, Ten point, sorry, eight points from four games. Uh, if that's extrapolated for the end of the season, that gives us 92 points which is on the cusp of winning it. As I've always said many times, many times, results matter, little else does. I know many of you don't take such a pragmatic view, but uh, I'm a bit old and wizened in the tooth. Um, tonight, we will be debating a hot topic. It's already had a few Twitter spats among fans. Uh, are we sticking with a 3 5 2 or do we go 4-4-2? You have your say, your thoughts. Les will have plenty to say on that, as will Chloe. Les, the club's record goal scorer. Uh, Chloe, the voice of Knox County Millennials, who tried to <laughs> cut across all sectors of Knox County supporters. Want you to get as actively involved as you can tonight. Uh, so we're going to try and have these little interactive questions. I feel like Bamba... Bamba Gascoigne on University Challenge, or for the younger generation, Jeremy Paxman. Uh, fingers on keyboards. OK, here's your first one for tonight. Uh, so get typing in. Who was your man of the match on Saturday? I think I know who you'll go for, but we'll see. Who was your man of the match on Saturday? Get typing now. Off we go. Um, Leslie, um, who was your man of the match Saturday? Alex Lacey. Go on. Um, cool head. I love to see him at the back. He seems to read every situation. Um, gets in there. Was he responsible for the, the first goal as well? Was it his pass that led to the first goal? Um, yeah, I, th I thought he did a, a, a fantastic job. OK, that's very good. There we are. There's his shirt. Hang on. Just there. No, it's not. That's Kyle Wharton. <laughs> Chloe, uh, who would you go for? Yeah, I'd probably mirror that. Um, oh, okay. And then I'd also um, kind of say the wing backs both played really well, um, Taylor and Dion. But overall, I would probably go Lacey. Like you say, first game back and kind of stepped up to the plate. So, and the the ball through um, for the first goal was quality. So, uh, but yeah, the wing backs as well played really well. OK, here's what people have got to say on the matter. Ian Birchinall, Palmer was my MOM. North Ants Pie says Lacey. Chris B says Reuben. Dale Pikett says Lacey. Brian Morphis says Palmer. Uh, Robert Holland, Lacey for me. Fraser Madison, Matty Palmer. Ben Hawksworth, Lacey. Kelvin Hallam, Dion or Lacey for me. Steve Kampfer, Lacey. Richard Hawksworth, great minds think alike. Sir Les, Kyle Sadler, Palmer. He made us tick. Uh, Paul Hawksworth, just to be different, thought Mitchell was excellent, mobile and exciting. Michael Wall says MOM Lacey. Jim Airy says Taylor for me. Um, OK, interesting. Um, I, I, I would, if I was going to pick someone that played the full 90, uh, I would have probably gone for DKE, um, Dion Kelly Evans. Uh, but I certainly think that Alex um, bought a bit of composure uh, back to the back line, um, just hoping uh, he had to come off, didn't he? Uh, that there's no too adverse a reaction, no midweek game. Uh, so hopefully, uh, we will have him available uh, on Saturday. Um, North Ants Pie Lacey is our Ruben Stroke Kell in defense. NCFC Pie Evening All. Uh, good 5-2 win for Knotts. Oh, wait, no, 3-2 with some interesting officiating. Yeah, I think one or two people have been studying the slow motion replays. Uh, Paul Hawksworth, Taylor looks a player. Chris Gosling, Kyle Wharton can do no wrong at the minute. F uh, four on the trot. Um, I think Ruben got at least that. Um, now, I'm delving back into my memory banks, Leslie. Mick Vinter held the record, didn't he, at one point? Something like eight or nine games on the spin he scored. Do you remember that? We're going back to the to the mid to late 70s now. Um, would that have been the season 
that he, he he came in and we partnered he, we were the that were pairing up front um mick mick was i had a great season with mick he, he you know we we talked about how we're going to play together and and um he was a master at, at, at um at getting in at, behind me reading the flick-ons and he scored a lot of goals from that and it was um he, yeah, he, he he was a top goal scorer before he moved on to Wrexham for a, a lot of money, didn't he? He did. Apologies. Uh, my son's just... I've, I've been hitting a few buttons here by mistake. So if you see yours highlighted, it's nothing more than, than fat thumbs from me. Um, anyway, let's get back. Uh, one of the main talking points I wanted to discuss tonight, um, and I know this has already caused uh, one or two Twitter spats on our social media channels. Um, is the formation. Uh, and, and look, let us be quite clear here. There's no criticism of anyone. The reason we're debating this was because Ian went with uh, his preferred, if you want, for use of a better phrase, 3-5-2 in the first half. And then he brought Richard Brindley off and changed it to a flat back four, which instantly created quite a lot of interest. And we got over the finishing line. OK, um, but it has sparked quite a bit of a debate. And so I thought tonight uh, I wanted to get sort of kind of fans views and thoughts on this. And there are quite clearly uh, a couple of quite strong camps. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, read a few out that we've had on social media. We'll pick up a few off uh, the message boards and we'll also get the considered views uh, of Leslie and Chloe. So, in no particular order, but I'm going to uh, read out kind of, if you like, um, the case um, for the four at the back, because uh, Phil Buxton sent us quite a long message on Facebook. Um, he says, I've said from day one, heavy concessions started when we went to a back three. Uh, four, three, three, 25 hours a day, eight days a week for me. Not have received all the praise for Barnett, Torquay and Wrexham, and rightly so. However, the square passing, back passing on Saturday was too slow. And we almost got found out with the high press. Only my opinion, I'm pretty sure Neil Ardley didn't like it either. He was under strict instructions from the owners. As much as Enzio had his haters, he was never a wing back. And for brief moments on Saturday, I saw Kel Roberts doing the same. Allow strikers to put their cards on the table and express themselves. It's what they were bought for. Allow them to do it. As always, come on, you pies. Uh, kind of in the opposite camp. Um, John Clark says, last Saturday was like going back a year. Only difference now is every time we go forward, we look like scoring. Um, Rob Davis, um, the back three has worked brilliantly under Birchnell. No need at all to change. That said, it's a positive. We're not changed to the system. And was good to see IB show there is a plan B and change in game yesterday um paul hawksworth uh nails his colors to the mast uh the easiest question i've been asked national league the flatter the better we four quality fullbacks and it just ha happens to suit the best player in the national league as well uh, uh paul adds i'd just like to add mitchell needs to start next to kw Apologies if that sounds like a real lower league formation. Um, we'll come on, if you like, to Cairo Mitchell forward options in a minute. But let's just debate this kind of um, formation at the back. Uh, there's more to read out yet, but I just want to get uh, a professional's viewpoint uh, from, from Les Brad, because we're all amateurs except Leslie. Yeah. And then we're not telling anyone what to do. We're not being critical. We are debating the aesthetics of the way Notts County play football. Les, what's your considered view on a debate that I suspect we will revisit many times this season? Well, first of all, um, I've spoken numerous times with Ian Birchnall and he's got a great philosophy on football and he wants to score goals. That's the first point. He wants to win, win matches scoring goals. He's also got a backroom team um, who analyse um, not only our, our players, but also the opposition. And the opposition analyse us as well. So we've got to give them credit. They're, they're, they've got people watching Notts County. They see how Notts County play. And they've been changing their tactics to play Notts County. So 
it's very difficult for the manager. You know, it's all right saying 4-4-2, let's do that. How about when the opposition have seen us play 4-4-2 and then counteract that? They come with tactics to, to, to counterbalance that. What I do like, what I do like is that Ian is is very much on the ball and he sees sees things very early going on. And um, you just talked there about Kara Mitchell, you know, at one stage he looked like he was coming on in the first half, not waiting till half time. Um no, he, he, he's in great depth, uh, Ian, um, on, 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 on the tactics. At the same ta time, tactics don't win you anything. It's about players as well. Players have got to perform. And, um, yeah, the, the, the second half, I, I, I know we changed things, but we also um, scored goals with, with when we went behind. Um, that long ball from Alex um, that went up to Kyle Wooten, we, we had a couple of long balls in there that scored as goals. And and so I think the players have got to grasp things at times as well, um, whereby Kyle's been on, on his game to me. Any any ball that's been knocked up to him in all the matches I've seen him play this season, he's got hold of it and he's bringing players into play and players can run in at the back. He's been a real handful. And um, I just think maybe we, we should be getting the ball a little bit earlier up to him, but that's no, I'm not having a moan or a groan at the manager's tactics. As I say, I don't think tactics win you anything. It's about players' performances. And for me, we've we've done great. You know, I think maybe um, Torquay was a lost couple of points, but other than that, that, uh, that grind out performance at, um, at Wrexham last week, you know, that's nine out of 10 for me. Saturday, you know, we, we weren't quite on it again. Tactics change, players change, and bang. Yeah, I, I think we're doing great. We're still work in progress. There's still lots of work going on behind the scenes with that that group of players. There's probably six new players in that team. You know, they haven't they haven't been together. Um, you know, and and I think we we started the season really well. Okay, Les, very good, Chloe. Uh, what's the voice of the millennials, our younger fan base? What are they thinking? I think it's just whichever formation we're playing, whichever team we're playing, we're scoring. And that's what everyone wants to see. I think, like Les says, Ian's a very clever man and he'll spot anything before anybody in the crowd does, even from kind of the touchline, which must be even more difficult to see. We've got kind of a better view sat up the top. But I think whatever we've been playing, we've been scoring and we've looked good. I think I don't think it is a debate of what we should be playing. We can adapt to both. We've got the players to adapt to both. And exactly like Les says, it depends on your opponents, whether we have to change that mid-game. We've got wingers to come on in Namane. We've got forwards to come on. We've got defenders to come on. We've got right backs, left backs. We, we can change the whole system whenever it needs to be. And I think um, that proved on Saturday that... The players do know other tactics other than just the the one they've been playing all season with the three at the back rather than the five, rather than the four. Sorry. Um, so I think that as soon as we get to know the positions kind of through and through of different formations, we'll be an even better team than what we are now. It's difficult when a lot of these teams have never played in a back three or with a back five um, because, like you say, lower leagues tend to just stick to the four four two. Uh, we tried the 4-4-2 last season and in the grand scheme of things, we didn't get promoted. So I'm always for trying something different. Um, I like to see that we do change the formation, even if it is early on. Um, kind of no disrespect to Wardy, he did a great job for us. But it was a little bit disappointing when he'd maybe wait till 60, 70 minutes to bring someone on. And maybe at that point, the game's kind of gone or we just substitute a like for like play and you sit there thinking... It's not really going to impact the game uh, like for like players, but you kind of sit and watch um, a first half and we've seen it at Barnet and it can be two completely different halves. And whether that's a change of personnel, change of tactics, something seems to work at half time every time. So I think it's great that we've got a manager who can see the potential of players on the bench, can see the potential of a different formation during different games. And it's exciting that we don't have to just think, oh, well, at half time the game's gone because we've shown this season we started at Barnet 0 0 and everyone was kind of, oh, it's back to kind of square one. We're playing against what we would probably think is going to be um, 
one of the bottom teams in this league as they were last season. And we come out second half, a little bit of a tweak in tactics and you get five goals. Um, I think either way, we've been scoring goals from both. So whichever's kind of more comfortable within that game, I think I don't I don't really have a preference at all. OK, uh, let's read some thoughts. There's plenty of them tonight. Colin Metcalf, I am convinced last season with no fans in, we would have lost that game against Oldershot. What pleased me was we had the attitude <coughs> to raise our game and get the points, even when we did so many things wrong. Uh, agreed, says Richard Hawksworth. Uh, Colin adds, I'd stick with the wing backs, but we need the option to change if it's not working. Michael Wall, O'Brien's goal was never offside. I think we've all seen that on the um, the video now. Goals similar to DKEs you often see given. Uh, we would have won by at least 4-2. Kyle Sadler, good evening. The game on Saturday was really entertaining. The fans back, atmosphere was excellent too. Also, a big thank you to Chloe for sorting the ticket collection queue just before kickoff. There you go. Make sure the gaffer sees that one. Uh, Alan, our Sutton United steward or whatever he is, down in London, 92 points, he says. One game at a time, bro. Absolutely. But it's always nice to uh, project a positive where we we can. Um, Ian Birchinall, nice to be back uh, for live broadcasting to see a home game on Saturday. Dale Pikett thinks DK's goal should have been given. We were sat right in front of it and their goalkeeper was never in control of the ball. It's interesting, isn't it? When you see it on the... I mean, I was watching it from the Pavis. My first reaction was that the goalkeeper had got it. You know, and, and we all look at slow motion. We all, you know, pour over a video 12 times, you know, unless we want the game stopped for 10 minutes at a time, in which case you take everything out of the control of the referee. It's a difficult one. Clearly, the linesman or assistant referee made a mistake for the Jim O'Brien one. Um, DK, I'm, I'm not so sure. I think we might have had our black and white tinted glasses on uh, if it had been the other way around. Um, OK, let's just whiz past the MOMs. Uh, da, 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 da. Just, just on, that, on with the goalkeeper, Paul, apparently yes, there is a new um, rule out this year that if the goalkeeper has both hands on the ball, it's a foul. Yeah, that's what I thought the rule was. Is that, is that changed then? Right, OK. Yeah, and did he have? But I haven't seen it. Did he have both hands on the ball at the at the impact with? Uh, the you know, I've not looked at the replay on that. I don't know whether oh, sorry, you. I thought, you, you, my, you my thought at the time was that it was a foul. I'm just saying when I saw it in real time, I thought that was a foul. Right. You know, may, may may well be the goalkeeper didn't have both hands on it, but I can yeah. kind of understand the refs thought processes there. Um, Colin Metcalf, with regards to Man of the Match, I give Ian Birchin on a mention for changing things and getting us the win. Uh, Calvin Hallam on a similar theme. Love the change of formation at half time. Cairo also did a great job of changing the game, gave us something different going in behind them. Husky says the formation worked well when it was changed. Cairo had bags of room on the left. Callum Frankton Lees. I like the three at the back, but also like 4 3 3 with our players. Uh, Paul Hawksworth, easiest debate of the season. Four at the back is a must. Chris B says if we want the best out of Roberts, we need him out wide. So four at the back. I think three slash five at the back fits the rest of the squad better. Um, the Robert Holland, the four argument doesn't matter for me. What matters is that we have players who can play different systems and a positive manager who knows what he wants. And if he's not getting it, he'll change it. North Ants Pie, if you watch the game, they were playing a flat five with two sitting in the first half. With the change to 4 3 3, we made them change by playing in the spaces their formation left. Uh, NCFC Pi, I'd like a switch in formation. Interesting, before Ian Birchinell joined us, his interviews elsewhere suggested 4-3-3 was his preferred, but with players he had, a, he had at the time didn't work for us. Uh, Calvin Hallam, me and a friend discussed Saturday, Roberts looked lost in that 10 roll and he needs to go out to the wide area. Maybe Sam or Cairo on the other with Ruben in the pure 10 roll. Uh, Darren Wrigley, Kyle Wooden goal came from putting the ball over the top. We haven't the players or speed to knock around at the back. 
Hang four is an interesting one. The fans have got us in this division by getting rid of Keith Curl. OK, <laughs> it's an interesting one. Um, Chris Gosling, three, five, two work. I think it's just tinkering with positions. We have the depth to change if needed and switch it up when necessary. Um NCFC Pie in some way surprised he didn't sign players to change to a 4-3-3. But guessing as it worked so well at end of last season, guess he decided to stick with it. Uh, Kyle Sadler, not really fussy. Winning is winning. The winger all suited Kelmore on Saturday. NC 1862, Notts County. We will not get promoted playing the way that we do. Now, I told you this had provoked a lot of debate, didn't I? Uh, Crispy uh, to a message of Darren Rigby The ball over the top works Because the opposition have to press high Because of our build up from the back uh, 1862 Notts County Need to be more direct um, Here's a question for you Les I mean I could go on for half an hour They just seem to keep coming From Richard Hawksworth uh, Les What system do you think Gets the most out of Kel Roberts So getting the best out of Kel He's clearly still coming to terms with 90 minutes and full fitness after a long layoff. What, what, what are your thoughts on Kellen getting the best out of him? Well, if I can go back to um, pre-season um, and Cal had got the all clear that he was um, all systems go, I had a little chat with him down at the ground and uh, he said he couldn't wait for the start of the season. He said he'd spoke with the manager and the, the manager... Um, was giving him a free role, basically to to run left, right, getting at the the back of um, Carl Wooten, and I says, "What about on the wing?" He says, "No, nah, I don't really like that position." And so, you know, it's interesting seeing all those um, um, comments coming in that his best position's out wide. I think you know a good player um, during the course of the game can see where there's openings. He can see, you know, I I, I like to see him when he's around that um, semicircle, when he's working um, just behind there and a little wider. And I love to see him looking for Ruben or Cal to play off and getting the ball back because I always fancy he could stick it in the net. Um, you know, when he gets out too wide, we, who was it? We, when we played Torquay, he went out wide and was playing with... Um, uh, Oh, I can't remember the other lad. You know, it didn't really work, did it? We weren't creating anything out there, if you remember. Um, I, I think he's got enough up there to work out where, the, where he's, he's going to be dangerous and where he can score goals because he and Ruben are both game changers to me. They're not orthodox. They're people that can come up with a trick, a flick or ball in that, 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 that is going to kill the opposition. And um, I think we have to leave it to those lads to work that out. Chloe, what's your thoughts? Getting the best out of Kel? Um, I think it really depends on a game-to-game -game basis. We've hit, seen him score from starting out wide, from starting kind of as more of a free roll near Ruben or just behind Wotton. Um, I think he got a little bit lost in the first half because um, I think he was trying to float a little bit too much. He wasn't getting any space and then... Putting him out wide did get the best out of him on Saturday. That's not to say he's now a winger and we should play him there every game. I just think that I don't know whether that was something he picked up on or whether Birchnell picked up on at half time, but it definitely was effective. He ended up getting room out there and I think he had the beating of his man and he cut inside, obviously, from the ball from Jim O'Brien to knock it to Ruben and then back to Cal. Um, so, again, um, he's a very good player. We all know that. And just to see him playing in different roles during the same game, to see him get the best out of what he's got, playing alongside Ruben or out wide and kind of bringing it in, I think it shows you a sign of a very good player. So I think, like Les says, I don't think he's necessarily a out-and-out -out winger, and whether that's his preferred um, or not. But it shows you we can play there if we need him to. If we're tending to get more space out wide and there's no room in the middle... He can definitely change that. And it showed on Saturday that he was more effective on the wing. But like I say, that's, that doesn't mean we have to change our whole formation to put Cal on the wing because that won't work every game. Um, I think it's easy for uh, oppos oppositions to pick up when they're analysing our games. If we played Cal out on the wing every single week, they're going to go, well, we'll stick two men out there if they're not going to change that. And then I suppose if they, 
our next opposition's Weymouth looking at our game, they go, well, we don't know where Carl's going to play on Saturday, whether he's going to play um, kind of with Ruben a little bit down the middle or whether he's going to go out wide, which is just an advantage to us. So it's great to see that one of our best players can kind of play anywhere and be effective. So it's definitely interesting. What I like about Kel, and I think demonstrates his undoubted quality at this level you know, and potentially higher, is that, I mean, you spoke earlier about the opposition analysts and studying. You know, everybody knows Kel is left-footed. He'll play often on the right and cutting onto his left and get a shot off. Yeah. And clearly defenders are all aware of that. They're all told, don't let him cut inside. Yeah. But everybody knows that's what he's going to do. But he still, if not at will, an awful lot of the time, he'll certainly get at least one chance a game where you know he's going to cut left. The defender tries to show him right. He'll drop the shoulder, jink inside, left foot shot. Good save from the keeper, goes in narrowly just wide. And he made that goal on Saturday look so easy. Look, it was almost like effortless. It was almost like he was side footing a ball in on a Sunday morning kickabout, wasn't it? You know, I suspect there's very few other players in that position, four knots, that could have scored that goal. And yet he he really did make it look like he was shelling peas. If you see a lot of goals that he scores, that's how he scores them. And, and, and he cuts him from the right and sticks it in the far corner. He's around that uh, semicircle doing the same thing and he strokes the ball into the net. That's a, that's a sign of a top-class player. And, and that's what he is. He is a game-changer. And that's why there are lots of clubs looking at him as well. Yeah, but my, my point is, Les, everybody knows that's what he's going to do. Yeah. But it's another thing stopping him do it. And that, I think, is the sign of the true talent that he yeah. is. Yeah. Well, that's what, you know, that's what the manager's up against every game that we play. The teams are getting geared up to stopping us um, getting in the positions they had to score goals and they're working very hard at it. And so far, they've they've done a really good job. Um, but um, no, we, 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 I can only commend the manager. He's doing a fantastic job there with a new group of players, younger players, um, you talk to we talked a lot of times about Cal Rubens, another player who can do just the same, but he 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 needs to work around that same area for me. That that eighteen yard box, he can do his his dummies, his flick overs, his one twos, and and stick the ball in the net as well as we've seen. Um, that those two are are are, are definitely um, big players, and and with Kyle Wooten up there, you know, laying on 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 chances as well. And, and, and um, Kara Mitchell, the way he performed in, in the second half when he came on, you think, wow, the, the, these players, when they all get to know each other and, and know where balls are going to come to them early. And I'm, I'm very excited about this group of players. I am really. The, the, as I say, they haven't been together that long. You know, two weeks ago, we had a reunion 50 years since we won the league with a group of players. And we talked about that, how, you know, it, it, it had taken us eight months to get to understand Jimmy. But we, that, that second season that we was here, we, we knew what we were doing. We, we went out there and it slowly, it kicked in. We, we started drawing matches away where we were losing and, and then we started winning games. And it, it all comes through confidence, getting to know each other, where you're playing. Um, that's what the, this group are doing currently. Here's a question for you, lads. We'll come to Chloe in a minute. Um, Jimmy Sill, legendary. Okay. Um, you could talk about Howard Wilkinson when he came along. You could talk about Sam Allardyce. You could talk about Neil Warnock as well. The managers that have delivered championships, promotions for Knox County. Um, you speak very fondly of Jimmy. Um, but, you, but Jimmy wasn't necessarily your mate, was he? We see a lot now in professional football where managers cultivate almost a friendly relationship with players. Um, but I'm, I, I, I suspect you may say your relationship with Jimmy was kind of one of respect. He wasn't necessarily one of the lads. He wasn't universally well liked among the players. But he had universal respect from you. 
Do you think that is perhaps a little bit different to the way it is now? It, just bear with me. I'm just getting a message. My battery's, the battery's going flat, so I haven't plugged in. So we're back again. <laughs> Get yourself, um, yourself a bit of a shock, Les. Come on. <laughs> I think if you ask each of those players that, that played for him in those um, promotion years in the 70s, they would say probably wouldn't go out for a meal or a drink with him in the evening. But they had total respect. He taught us really what being a professional football was a footballer was all about. I'd had no coaching until he came along. Um, and he taught us that you weren't going out there just to play football. You're going out there to do a job. Um, when I watch a football match now, I remember everything that he tells us. And, and, and with regards to me, um, he said, your job in, in my team is on the pitch around that 18-yard box, causing havoc to those central defenders, um, setting up chances, scoring goals. I'll take anything else outside of the box, but that's what your job is. If you're not doing that, I'll get somebody else. And, and every Tuesday and Thursday, we had a full-scale practice match, first team against reserves. Um, and we had to play as, as, as it was a full match. So we got to know um, how everybody passed and kicked the ball. You know, we, we worked as two up front, Tony Aitley and myself, whoever it was, and, and one dropped off and the other ran in the back. And we learned how... Bob Worthington, when he was going to kick the ball, it was coming in like a rocket. Bill Brimley at the other side, he couldn't kick a ball like that. He was going to hang it up. So we, we learned all of that, but we we also knew what our jobs were on the pitch as well. And and as a unit, we, I thought we did that really well. And it, it got a success through two divisions. And, and and we just missed out on the top, although we did get, get into the top division in the, was it 1980? 81, yeah, 80, whatever. 81 season. But, um, no, he, he was a fantastic guy in, in, in keeping it simple so you could understand what your role was in every single position. And that's why we were successful. Very good. Um, let's read a few more comments out. Um, Ian Birchinall, uh, more brownie points for you, Chloe. Agree with Chloe. Love how IB will change it uh, as soon as he notices. Um, Husky says, was I the only one who thought the atmosphere was flatter than usual on Saturday? Um uh, duh, 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 ben Hawksworth talking about Cal thinks he looks much more effective and natural out wide 1v1. Um, uh, Thick Woofers 24. We saw how open the game became in the second half when we went four at the back. Prefer the three at the back as we look a lot more secure, but should adjust per game and not keep it the same all the time. Either way, Darren Wrigley, you can't have Cal and Ruben in the middle. They fall over each other as two number 10s. They don't work together. The pace is missing. If it means Cal being out on the right wing, so be it. Uh, NCFC Pie, interesting to see Kevin Nolan. Yes, saw him there at the game on Saturday. Would love a podcast from him, Paul. Uh, still not 100% what happened. <laughs> Yeah, there's a few things, few stories to be told there. We might get around to it. Um, if Kevin is up for it, we, 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 I would welcome him on the show. But that's entirely Kevin's decision. North Dance Pie, uh, question for Les. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, Richard Hawksworth, I think this was a quote I used in my book. It was probably a, a quote you used in your book, Les, and probably a, a, a quote used in Don's book. Uh, Richard Hawksworth, you didn't see snooker players running around the table. Eh, hey, laddie. <laughs> well, you know, like, everyone does a Jimmy impression. They, they, you can't help it, can you? You can't yeah. help it. Um, yeah. Chloe, um, Cairo Mitchell, he sparked a lot of debate. Come off the bench uh, uh, on Saturday. Did well against Wrexham. Um kind of gives us a different attacking dynamic when he's on the pitch. Absolutely. I think he was a little bit of a a little bit of a surprise really. I didn't really know what to expect from him. Didn't know a lot about him when he came. So it was a nice surprise at Wrexham and I thought he could this guy can hold the ball up well and give us a different dynamic. Whether we start starting games is a different question. But he's definitely a positive addition and 
I've noticed a lot of the comments from everyone have quieted down about this prolific goal score and now we started playing. I haven't heard that one for a while now. Um, I know there was like a bit of a debate when we signed him, like, oh, he's another nobody. I've, I don't know whether he's going to even get a game, never mind, start scoring for us. And I think that's changed a few people's opinions now. Um, we've shown that he can play a little bit out wide as well. Um which is always an advantage if you want to kind of play with that formation. Um, he likes running, which is always a help. You all need, always need people making the runs. Um, and I think he linked up quite well with um, Taylor and a couple of other the players that um, out wide. I'd also like to see him, if we do go to a 4-4-2, playing alongside um, Wotton a little bit more. I, understand, I know there are two kind of big players, maybe similar abilities. But I would like to see maybe in a different style of game, them two playing off each other a little bit more might give us something else. Might again, might not work, but I haven't seen it yet. But from what I have seen from him, a positive reaction all round. I haven't kind of heard anyone say anything negative about him. So again, it takes some pressure off Wotton, which is always important. We kind of flogged him last season because he was kind of one of the only options. Obviously, we've got Lewis Knight to come back as well. I don't know what he's kind of, where his injury is standing, but... Cairo Mitchell, I can only praise him. Um, he's come on for two games now and really impressed with, um, really impressed me. So um, definitely quietened a few people down on with regards to a forward. Cairo, uh, Leslie, um, we all know the attributes of Kel um, and Ruben, and we'll come on to talk about Kyle in a minute because we kind of no one mentions him, and he scored four goals on the bounce. You know, and when we had a straw poll in last week's show, uh, you know, we've had so much hype around Cal and Ruben. And I said, quick, quick fire. Who's going to be the top scorer? About 90 percent of all the people on this show. Oh, I'll be Kyle. What? You know, it's just like he'll score. He'll be top scorer. But we won't mention it. We'll talk about Cal and Ruben and all this. We'll come on to him in a minute. Um, Cairo gives us a, a more aggressive um, physical option. Yeah. Compared to Kel and Ruben. Uh, and as Chloe said, trial by Wikipedia, he can't score goals. But from what people have seen when he hasn't scored in these two games, everybody seems to really like what they see and what he brings to Knox's front line. Well, I watched um, the game on, on the television last week against Wrexham and, and, and when he came on, I thought, He's a bit of a handful. He's, he, he, he's a real threat. And then the game on Saturday when he came on, his pace is electric. He can go past players at will. And they got in some good positions to deliver balls in. And, and, and they were good quality balls in there as well. So, yeah, he, he's got um, a new dimension to offer Ian um, from an attacking point of view. Um, and I'm pretty sure that he could fill in the role of... Um, of Kyle Wotton, should we we get into a run of a few games, um, you know, if they're coming up Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, and Kyle needs a, a bit of a break, I'm sure he could um, he could handle that as well. So he, he he's a great acquisition. Um, okay, from Notts County's record club goal scorer, uh, a critique of our current powerful centre forward, uh, who now everyone is tipping to be our top scorer this season. He scored in each of the opening four games, led the line very well. Your thoughts um, on our on our man up top, Kyle Wharton? Um, it's a diffi difficult one because obviously football um, has changed from the days that I played when we used to have... Um, two forwards, one dropping off, one running in the back, and the ball was always played. Any attack, um, there was no ball, balls being passed across the back four. It went forward. So you were always involved in the game. And um, over recent years, there's, there's been more keeping possession if, uh, and defenders are reluctant to throw the ball forward if there's maybe a slight doubt that they might lose it. They want to keep it and they'll pass it square again. So it's become a very difficult role playing up front. Um, and I watch Kyle um, and he is incredible. He, he, he is always making himself available for that ball, even though it doesn't come. Uh, and this season, I think, 
I didn't see it too much last season or, or, or the one before, but this season it has been coming forward. And for me, he's done a fantastic job of being getting hold of it, not giving it away and, and getting players involved. Um, he's always around looking for um, that ball coming into the box. You know, he scored a great header, didn't he, at Wrexham. Um, and, and he's a quality player and, and you know, he, he can certainly play at two, two levels higher than where he is now. So... I hope he doesn't. I hope he stays with Knotts and takes us up there. But he, he, he is a quality striker. Kyle Wotton, Chloe, your thoughts? I mean, we can't fault him, can we? I think a lot of people just focus on him scoring goals and he's not that type of forward. Um, obviously, he's got 18, 19 for the last couple of seasons, which is very good. Um, and I imagine he'll be hitting that 20 mark with him being 4-4, four and four, which is a great record for us and I've been reading a couple of comments about kind of um, his goal scoring record for us and we can't fault him whether he's had somewhere up, someone up there with him or not um, he's still provided with us with them goals it's great to see him bringing other people into the game and like Les says holding the ball up we, we haven't got anyone better for that um, and when you've got players that can score from midfield like we do, you kind of your cows, your Rubens, even Mitchell and Jim O'Brien. He's he's likes to chip in recently. Um, now he's playing that kind of further forward role. We're bringing people, other people into it. We're now getting goals from kind of all positions, not just up front. Um, and I think you can kind of tell he's he's really enjoying himself. Uh, he likes. He's a he's definitely a team player. You see a lot of these kind of players in higher divisions that want it all for themselves. I don't, don't get me wrong. I'm sure he's wanting to get kind of top goal scorer at the club and then reach a little bit higher and go top goal scorer of the league. Of course, he's got them individual goals, but I can see that his main priority is the team, whether some people look a little bit disappointed, you know, when they were maybe in a better position to to score and didn't get the pass. But from Wotton's perspective, I don't I don't think he really cares whether he scores or whether he sets someone up as long as we're winning games, which is a great kind of personality to have on the pitch. He's very reliable and always has been. Um, whether he scores tappings or even better goals from wherever outside the box, inside the box, he's always there, um, which is kind of a great attribute to have. Um, and then they kind of, once the ball kind of falls for him, you do fancy him, um, which is, again, always what you want. We talk about a prolific goal scorer. We've got one. Um, and if someone, we've had this debate before, everyone wanted this prolific goal scorer, 20, 30 man goal a season. And you're not going to get that when they know they're going to be on the bench behind Kyle Wotton, who's going to, because he is our number one and that's not going to change anytime soon unless, like Les says, he does leave for a higher club, which he's capable of doing, but I hope he doesn't. Um, so yeah, we've got, we've got Kyle and I think now he's bringing other people into it. We've got scorers from midfield. Um, it's only helping both his game and everybody else's. So I think he's, he's up there for kind of play of the season. Um, absolutely as he is every season. Uh, North Ants Pie says, hasn't Kyle got a near one in two goals to game ratio? Chris Gosling, Taylor and Mitchell, given time, could be a very interesting combination. NCFC Pie, I miss Eli Sam. We need some Puskas award-winning goals back in the squad. <clears throat> Uh, Richard Hawksworth Kyle has got an almost identical goal scoring record in this division to Shimanga uh, Paul Hawksworth uh, Mitchell's mobility is key uh, Kelvin Hallam I've noticed the balls into him are more cuter now and actually into him rather than above him to win flick-ons uh, Colin Metcalf, where do you guys see Sam fitting in? My view is it may benefit both him and Knox to send him out on loan somewhere. Uh, hang for uh, Ian is good to his word, he will make our players better. Uh, Chimanga says Darren Wrigley, 200 grand. How much wouldn't I'd rather have Kyle any day? Um, Leslie, um, change tack slightly. Um, older shot at the bottom, aren't they? They lost four games on the trot. Um, but they gave us a very competitive run out. Um, yeah, I think, well, this, um, I think uh, this could be an indication, Les. Last season, when we were playing teams with nothing to play for, it didn't matter. They couldn't be relegated. Every game we now play, uh, 
the opposition are going to be all guns blazing, which clearly wasn't quite the case with no relegation last season. Um, my question, Les, is, um, is there a danger or not that we, as a club and as a fan base, almost have too much of a superiority complex? You know, before Oldershot, and we've won, yeah, uh, it was kind of, well, well, you know, we should win the next five, and I wouldn't take anything less than winning the next four, yeah? Now, Oldershot are bottom. For me, they weren't a bad team Saturday. They weren't a bad team. No, and, and, and I was speaking to one of their directors after the game, and he said that is four times better than we've played in any other match this season. <laughs> um, <Sorry. laughs> yeah. you know, just, just, just imagine virtually uh, probably 16, 17 clubs are going to come to Meadow Lane. They're going to play in front of 7,000 fans and, you know, if you want to play football, want to play in front of a crowd, it's going to lift you, isn't it? You're going to, you want to play. Um, it, it, it's like a, a cup final to them. So it is very difficult and, and it makes it difficult for, for our lads as well because they want so much to play well and, 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 and win the game and they want to win in style. They want to play football. They want to score goals. And, and um, you can't always do that. Other teams don't let you. And, and as Jimmy used to say, you have to win the battle before you can play. Uh, and, and that was grinding out a, a goal and you get one up and then we don't concede again. And then you get another, and then you go on and play your stylish football and, and get your three, four, fives. But um, it, it isn't as simple as that. So um, we're not on our own. Um, Wrexham have had all, all the, the talk going with them as well. And they've started similar to us. They haven't lost, but I think they've had two or three draws. Stockport or another team. Um, yeah, I, I, all the teams in that league that um, have, have got the so-called promotion badge, you know, that everybody's talking about, they're going to find it tough against the opposition. They're not going to roll over and let them play. The standard of this league definitely has, has got a lot higher than it was, shall we say, three or four years ago. Um, and, and, you know, we've just got to keep working at it and, and, and you know, confidence of not losing um, should help you to get better each game. And, um, yeah, I read the fans on, on, on social media and there is an expectancy that Notts County are the big club. We will win them. You know, we, we get the draw at Wrexham now. It's all we've got six winnable matches now. That gets them. Um, but it isn't as simple as that. And, and, and sometimes, you know, like Saturday, you've got to give credit to Aldershot. They came and give us a good game. And, and then you've got to give credit to us. We were 2 1 down and, and, and we pushed on and we got a couple of goals. And what I did find strange, to be honest, on Saturday, where I thought um, when there's four or five minutes of, of extra time to play, oh, we'll keep the ball. And, and, and you know, we were, we were hitting long ball, um, which I found a bit strange. But, Hey, I'm 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 not knocking it. I'm I'm enjoying the ride, and I'm I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that, that you know we, they all stick together. There's a great atmosphere in the in the dressing room. I spoke with Cairo last week, introduced myself, and wished him all the best. I I said I hope you can beat my record. And, uh, what he did he say? He says it will be great because if you do, we'll be playing up in the second division or the championship. Lovely, lovely lad. He, 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 I just said, are you enjoying it? He says, the dressing room, he says, I've been in dressing rooms um, that aren't so good. He says, this is fantastic. The group of players there, there's 22 players all under contracts. They all want to work for each other. They all want to do well. The, 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 there's no nastiness in there. The, they're all going the right way. And I, I love to hear that. You know, that brings back good memories to me of the Cyril years. So, um, yeah. Yeah. The club's in a very good place at the moment, and just let's hope it continues. Yeah, you certainly wouldn't have thought, Chloe, would you? Older shot, bottom of the table, uh, not top four. Um, it was a, it was. Let's be honest, it was a pretty nip and tuck game that, to be honest, could have ended up going either way. You know. Yeah, absolutely, oh, I and I think it just shows you that it's a difficult league. You, we talk about these top three, four, five, six, seven teams. 
and you're forgetting about all the ones that are kind of you'd call mid table or bottom half. We've proved that over the last couple of seasons that there's no easy games, and we ended up losing to a lot of teams, um, kind of similar, um, even ones with part time players. We came out of it and we're like, How are we losing to Chorley and teams like that? But like you say, no easy game whatsoever. Um, as much as these teams should be kind of winnable games for us, they it doesn't end up that way, and I think the difference between this season and last season is we are coming out and winning them. Um, and we do have the players to kind of change it, adapt to the game. But definitely, I think you've got to give credit to Aldershot. Um, losing your first three is going to be difficult. Um, they're going to pick up a point somewhere, and I'm just glad it wasn't against us. Um, but I definitely think that it just shows that the level um, of the teams that are in this league this season, it's going to be one of the most difficult leagues to get out of, um, especially with the just one going up automatically. But I think... The difference um, is going to be beating teams like that, especially at home. It's more, much more difficult away. Um, everybody says win your home games, draw you away, and you're you're away, which is easy to say. But I think um, obviously it's important when you're playing the teams in and around you that you don't um, lose points to them. Um, drawing, they're not getting away from you. The Wrexham game, we've lost no points. Um, they've gained no points on us. Um, we've then got to beat the teams that are kind of the ones that we should, I say, expect. And you, we shouldn't really say we, we expect to win any game, but a team that we aren't expecting to be kind of pushing for them playoffs So the teams we need to be beating at home, um, which we are doing. Obviously, the Torquay is a little bit of a different one, um, but... It's, it was a great win on Saturday. Um, we obviously made it a little bit more difficult than maybe it needed to be, but again, that's credit to them. Um, and it just shows you what an exciting uh, league and season it's going to be. And hopefully it's not a 3-2 uh, game every week. I don't think my heart would be able to cope with that. Um, as long as we're scoring goals, then I think everyone's happy. But and it's going in our favour at the moment. So as long as it keeps going like that... Um, I've got kind of no qualms at all. Um, it's a thoughts. Chris Gosling, Aldershot lost to three of the top four, have they? OK, no shame in that, says Chris. Dale Pike, every team raises their game when they come to Madeleine. Michael Wall, Aldershot looked a decent side to me. They'll be mid-table, poss around the playoffs. Uh, Kelvin Hallam, Stewart said beforehand we, we would beat them easy. I said no chance, uh, no game's ever easy in this league. Last two seasons have proved that. Moddy Moby says, what I am impressed with is that we grind out a win. In previous seasons, I'd say we would have lost or drew in this type of game. Um, same as the Wrexham game, we battled as a team. It's great to see. Ian Birchinell says, I thought Saturday was another very good advert for the National League. Ian Birchinell adds, did you see four attendances were above 5K, uh, 5,000 on Saturday in the National League? That's impressive for the fifth tier. Yeah, we were second highest. Southend just picked us. Um, they were playing Wrexham. I believe Wrexham took quite a lot of fans um, down to Southend. Um, well, that was a long trip for Wrexham fans to Southend. A uh, bit of a jaunt coming up on Saturday uh, down to uh, Weymouth, Les. Um, have you ever been to Weymouth before? Have you ever played at Weymouth? Only to paddle in the sea, I think. Never played down there. No, I've, uh, I'm thinking about it. It's just what is it four hours it's it's, it's, it's a good trip but it's, it's uh, a unfortunately trip. both both the railway lines either the grantham line or the nottingham line into the, they've both got massive engineering works and it is really tricky getting back uh, i.e oh. the point if you miss a connection you don't get back at all on the saturday night oh. but i do believe yeah i do believe there's a lot of knots fans uh, going chloe we'll come back in a moment because I, I think the, t the ticket they've sold a lot of tickets for weymouth haven't they yeah, a good few hundred. I know a lot of people going down, um, staying in hotels, which was originally our idea. And then we saw the prices and thought, oh, there's no way we're doing that because my manager was telling me on Saturday that apparently there's an event on down there at the same time, which is typical. It always seems to happen. And we were looking for a night that we're wanting outside of Weymouth as well, like £200. And it's just a little bit too much, I think, of travelling all that way. So I am giving this one a miss and going back up to Manchester. Uh, I'll be keeping an eye on Twitter, but we sound like we're going to be taking a good following, which is kind of 
shows you the quality of our fans and they don't they don't miss one do they a lot of them so I think we're expecting a good few hundred down there which is very impressive for a long trip like that yeah I, sh I should be going I'm not quite sure how yet but I should be going <laughs> uh Les I'm sure members of the Brad fraternity will be on an overnight somewhere won't they uh eldest son Simon's definitely going down I'm not sure about Tim um yeah, he's been a busy man with uh, his. He works at Trent Bridge, and he's been very busy. Very good job. Yeah, and, um, cricket clubs. Game. Was his young daughter's birthday over the weekend, so he's been a busy man. I'm not sure whether he's uh, he's, he's on his way down there. But, uh, it'll be uh, Akko's coach, I think, for uh, for many of them. <laughs> Akko's special. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and this I think is um this is a banana skin one for us because you know. We, you know, we dismiss Weymouth, you know, ah, oh, they're, they're non-league, you know, we're football league. Um, uh, they've won the last two, haven't they, Weymouth? You know, they, they, you know, I think this is a, I think this is, a, they're all difficult, aren't they? I think this is a tricky game. I think this is a tricky game for us. We, we kind of think we're going to just turn up. Uh, or a lot of our fans do, and we're bound to beat them because it's Little Weymouth. And and certainly, Claire, there, I'm sure there will be a bigger way following. I, I, this is the first time I believe fans can go to the ground. Of course, you know, people like me, we can tick off another ground. Uh, I'm sort of like 135 different grounds. I've seen Knots play on that. Uh, ridiculous, isn't it? Um, I think it's tricky. I, I, I think this one is tricky, Les. I, I do, you know. They're all tough games. They are what they are, and and um, I'm, I'm sure the manager and his backroom team will, will be working on that. And it's their job to get the the players' heads in gear so that when they're going out of that dressing room door before the match, they know what they've got to do, and the, 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 they've got to go out and and and, and win the game. And um, you know, we went down to the first game at Barnet, and. Um, you know, whilst uh, I thought we played really well in the first half, we did have some opportunities to score, but never converted it into really good chances. And and things were changed at half time then, and and we came out and and and, and banged the goals in. So, you know, um, he, he's got the ability to do that, and 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 I think all the players know that as well. So I think they're on the toes, and 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 um, no, it is everything's good at the moment, but. There are potential banana skins where, whether they're home or away, it just getting the players in the right mind, leaving that dressing room. Chloe, what's your thoughts Saturday? Yeah, like you say, they're all difficult games. I saw they bought, um, they beat Solio at Solio, which it, it, I'd say I'd take a win at Solio now. So never mind them. Um, I would like to see a point, um, given the oppositions that we have played so far and haven't dropped points. Um, I would like to see at least a point. Obviously, a win would be great. Um, it's always a lot to ask going away from home, no matter where you are. Um, I imagine the long trip takes it out of the players as well. You've got to take things like that into consideration a little bit. We've shown we can change formation and adapt to the game at half time. So I wouldn't kind of throw any scoreline and say we're out of this game now. If you're talking three or four nil, then possibly. Um, but I think you've got to look at and trust in the manager that no matter what team we're facing, we're going to have kind of a tactic for that and a tactic if if it's not going too well at half time. So I would like to say I do expect a point um, and then anything more than that's going to be a great result. But I wouldn't be kind of palming them off to say oh, it'll be a kind of walkthrough when they've just beat Solihull at Solihull. So, but yeah, I'd like to be seeing a point, one more point on the board at least. Uh, David, Amy advises me, go on the coach and enjoy the crack. I am terrible on buses, by the way. Uh, since a little kid, oh, dear me, I'm not good on buses. When I was at Leicester, I used to travel on the team bus. I always used to have to sit right at the front with Martin O'Neill and Robbo, John Robertson, because halfway down the bus, I'd be wanting to be ill. I'm terrible on buses. Trains I'm good on. Uh, driving I'm fine. Uh, I'm not very good on coaches. Uh, Kelvin Hallam, Weymouth started very well. Ian Birchnell, I said seven points from next three games uh, and Weymouth was the worry bead. Uh, look, we don't like to mock anyone because uh, something's bound to happen badly to us. I, I have seen it. It was, I have to say, pretty spectacular. Uh, did anyone see Pierce Bird's own goal at the weekend? 
It was a good 35 yard a chip in the deeper, Les. I don't know if have you seen it? I haven't seen it. Oh, no, it's a good one, Chloe. I presume you've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. Oh dear, yeah, that, yes, not not great, not great. Uh, Ian Birchnell, yeah, it was a super, superb strike. Wooden would have been proud of that. Uh, indeed, he would. We're coming up to the hour mark. Uh, we're going to wrap up on time for once tonight. Uh, later in the week, assuming you are watching this in the week uh, that we are broadcasting it, uh, we've got a special show with Ollie Bayliss, who is very much the guru of National League, all things non-league. Um, so he's going to join myself for a special pre-recorded show. Uh, we're doing that on Thursday. Uh, if you've got any questions that you want uh, to put to Ollie, drop us a line on either my personal social media or our Magpie Circle Pod social media. Any questions you've got, we'll be grilling him on salary cap, the new uh, chairman, uh, any chances of changing promotion, relegation, structure, playoffs, all of that sort of thing. Uh, Ollie is the man, as much as, as if anyone can know what is going on in the National League. He is very much the go-to person, the Oracle. So that's Thursday. Send in any questions that you want ahead of that. All that remains now is for me to say uh, a big thank you to Chloe for joining us tonight. Thanks a lot for having me again. It's always a pleasure. Uh, always a pleasure to have you here as well, Chloe. Leslie, record club goal scorer. Um, delighted to hear some real insight into the likes of Kyle Wharton to Cairo Mitchell and the kind of chats you've had in the dressing room in a sanctum with Ian and with the players. Um, fingers crossed. Hopefully all bodes well. Um, and we look forward to seeing you both in, fu in the future, uh, in the very near future, I'm sure. Uh, Leslie, thank you ever so much for joining us tonight and giving us a few pearls of wisdom from a bygone era. Always a pleasure, Paul. Thank you. Oh, by the way, I bet it's a lovely day. I bet you've been playing golf, haven't you? Um, I have. Terry Bowles um, pleaded with me to play. He was short of a player to play in a match against Beeston today. So I played with the captain, Terry Bowles, and we won seven and six. No. And, uh, I, I, yeah, I had uh, six balls and a birdie. I've played some delightful golf today. So I've had a good day. I knew <laughs> you'd right. be out. I knew you'd be out, Leslie. I knew you'd be out. Uh, that's it for tonight, folks. And th thanks to all of you. Huge numbers tonight on the message board. It's not, it's not far off a record. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we'll be back Thursday with our National League special with Ollie Bayliss. Take care.